Righto, we're here today to have a look at an aerial on uh, a gate control unit. And um, we have a hole in the top of the cabinet here. And the top of the cabinet's metallic. At least it feels like it's metallic. And I suspect that the aerial that was supposed to be mounted in here is a ground plane dependent antenna. Uh, but what's actually happened is they've um, decided to mount this antenna up on the top of a pole. So let's go up and have a look. And what do we see? Yeah, it looks like it's well, it's difficult to tell because of course it's all thoroughly snotted up with um, silicon but I would suspect that that antenna was designed to come through below a metallic plate um, and the metallic plate in its proper location would form a ground plane. Here of course on the top of uh, a wooden pole like this we have neither a reflective surface nor a conductive surface so this antenna will be uh, probably fairly poor. Anyway, the other thing we've noticed while we're out here is whoever did this installation is a bit of a muppet. Because this, uh, this gate control works at 433 megahertz, and here we have what is obviously a, a lash up joint. Uh, looks very much like it's done with a couple of electrical connectors and then covered over with heat shrink. Uh, but I think this one might be one for the rogues gallery, but we're going to dissect this and have a look inside and uh, see how big a muppet the person was that did this job. Okay, so we've um, examined our coaxial joint, if you want to call it that, and whoever joined this coax did the usual uh, just join the center conductors and just join the um, uh, braid and they've used electrical joiners and there's been no attempt whatsoever to uh, maintain the coaxial nature of the join um, nor has there been any attempt whatsoever to maintain the impedance of 50 ohms um, so I, I'll give you zero out of ten for your attempt um, and the comment that I've got to make is if you're going to operate in my trade please at least get the right tools get the right connections and learn how to do it properly because um, when you do a joint of this nature at uh, high frequencies and in this case it's 433 megs you're on hiding to nothing Okay, we're going to do a coaxial join. We decided to do this coaxial join on camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an FME120 on one side and an FME an FME101 on the other side. So this is the correct way to join 50 ohm coaxial cable. First thing you've got to do is remember to put that on the cable. A little gold pin, because we're standing out here on the grass, very likely to lose that, so put that in a safe place. I'm going to put it between my lips. Strip the cable and make sure there's no potential little wires that could uh, cause the thing to short. I might have cut that a little bit too long, we'll find out in a minute. Yeah, just a whisker. All of the RF is throwing, flowing through this little gold centre pin. 
and very important to terminate this little gold centre pin. There's a tiny little um, witness hole in there. You can either solder it by working a little bit of solder through that little gold through the little witness hole. Um, but it's always much easier to crimp these things. You've got the appropriate crimp tools. It's just like that. And we'll terminate the braid. We'll slit the black plastic outer off there. Peel that away and we'll just displace that a little bit so we create a little gap without bending the centre pin. We just need to create a little gap between the braid and the um, and the um, insulator. We'll slide that up there like that. Bring this down here. Push that one in a little bit far. That pin there should be right at the right flush with the end of this connector. And then crimp the, the outer up like that. Now we've got a little bit of heat shrink here. This is vitally important. These two connectors are going to be outside and they're not waterproof. So you actually need to waterproof them. If, you'd, if you use these connectors and leave them outside for the water to get in, again you're on hiding to nothing. Anyway, let's do the other side. This side is our uh, FME 101 connector. And the most vital piece down inside here, not to lose again, is a little gold centre pin. So that's the first thing we're going to put in a safe place. Braid sleeve crimp. there's no little fine wires that are likely to create a problem. Now this connector here, I highly recommend you pay attention to which way around this little securing nut goes. It's got to go with the thread towards the end. that one a bit long too. Everything's a bit long today. Okay. Again, there's a little witness hole on this pin. Um, you can solder them, but the easiest thing to do is crimp them. Put the crimp tool right hard against that shoulder, but when you crimp it, little shoulder there you're crimping against. Again we'll split this outer jacket. And we'll just displace this. A little bit of, this is a um, twin screen coax, the one we're joining here. Here's a bit of foil in there. Slide that over there. that in tight, beat that up over there like that, hold it all tight together, make sure the thread is forward towards the end of the connector. Crump it up again. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to join that to that, do the nut up. We're going to nip it up an extra half turn just to make sure it's nice and firm inside there. We'll get a couple of spanners, a couple of little spanners and give that an extra half turn. Then we're going to slide that over the top of there and we're going to heat shrink that up to keep it waterproof. Okay folks, that's it. That's how you make a coaxial join and do it correctly.
Okay, just to um, give everyone some idea of what we're doing here, we've got a, uh, a long aluminium pole with a bracket on the top of it, and what we're doing is we're erecting the um, uh, gate control aerials for this gate high into the air um, so that um, the uh, gate control can work over the top of all of the stacks of logs and things we've got out here and um, because on the top of this pole uh, there will be no ground plane because we're um, way up in the air um, we've chosen to use a ground plane independent antenna and um, the antenna of choice is this one here it's an RFI antenna um, we need to alter this air, uh, antenna a little bit it is a um, I'll just put the antenna down on the ground it is a CD51 CD51 6570 series antenna and it's for use between 380 and uh, 440 megs. Um, down the bottom here we actually have a, a, a trimming chart and for our 433 meg frequency which is the, the frequency of this gate control we need to trim the upper section of this antenna to 255 millimeters. So that's the length A, which is shown at the right hand end of the chart. Of course, we also need to actually terminate this antenna, and in this case, we uh, expose the, um, the dielectric portion of the coax cable for a length of 48 millimeters. And that's all we have to do with this antenna cut it to length and correctly terminate it. And that's what we're about to do now. Here's our barrier gate antenna, way up there in the air. There's no ground plane up there, that's the reason why we used a ground independent antenna.